Hello and welcome back from, to another video from me and I'm going to be looking at all of my spin-off figures from Doctor Who well we did touch on these a little bit in my video of my collection video of all my Doctor Who figures but we didn't touch on them too much so that is why we'll be taking a look at them now so I'll start off with the Torchwood range because I think oh, so that was released first. I'm not sure, but I'll just take all the figures out of the way. Like we painted Sarah Jane and Slavine falling over there. Um, yeah, I'll start by doing that, and I'll start off with uh, uh, Jack. This is um, the Sci-Fi Collector release. Um, yeah. This was a team-up between Sci-Fi Collector and Character Options. Now, the likeness is... Uh, not exactly like John Barrowman, but close enough, I suppose. The gun sculpt is quite good. Also, the sculpt... I don't know if it will we'll probably focus on camera. Uh, probably not. I'll move away a bit. The watch sculpt looks okay. Uh, the face is a bit... Eh, um... The arms on the side, the Vortex Manipulator is very nicely sculpted. Um, yeah, well, I'm best start with, the costume is accurate to what he wears in Tortured Series 1 and 2, I think. I'm not quite sure, but the head can turn from side to side. The arms can do, uh, it can go like that and do the full 360 around the middle and everything. And also it can bend and do swivel hips and turns and everything. The legs are the same. Yeah, it's good range of articulation, but not as well as other figures. I think it looks quite good, and um, I think it's uh, a great figure. My camera's doing something a bit weird. I think it's a great figure, and I think it stands out quite well to everything. Okay, so next figure I'm moving on to is... Gwen Cooper. This one, uh, the faces on the torture diggers aren't as well as I would have hoped. Yeah, it's not that great of a likeness, but I would just like to say something. The Torchwood Jack is a much uh, interesting figure. I prefer the Doctor Who version. It looks much better, much, much, much better. The, the head sculpt looks more like John Barrowman, and the face looks more like John Barrowman. But, yeah, that, that maybe just me. Maybe just, just me. Uh, okay, so we'll be moving on to Gwen. Okay, I did touch on this just five seconds ago, but I just got something into the way. The head can't do 360, even though on the prototype it showed a line through the neck. Maybe it's better that character and sci-fi collector went with this. But it's not the best range of figures. The quality on these, eh, they're okay. But, um, quite nice. Uh, you can see that uh, the face doesn't look anything like the actress. Please, uh, Gwen, you may be able to see that the face does look a bit unusual. But that's probably because of the way it's uh, filmed and everything. The arms do, like, sides bit there, like Jack. Most of the Wave 1 figures have the same amount of articulation. Oh, this one's got the legs and everything. Uh, it's, um, good. It also comes with an accessory. Uh, I'll just get the accessory up. You probably won't be... Oh, well, but here is the gum that's used. Well, she uses it because she's a member of Torchwood. And it does slot into her hand very nicely. But... It's not the best figure in the wave. The the human characters aren't that well made, but I they're nice as as they are. I mean, the costumes are spot on and everything. It's just the head likenesses aren't that great. Um, moving on to the Cyberwoman, uh, Yanto's girlfriend. I don't actually have Yanto, but I. Would love to get a Yanto, but I can't. I think that head sculpt looks more accurate on for Yanto. Um, so here we have the Cyberwoman. She does have this weird kind of 
head movement. Uh, she's wearing some very unusual clothes, if we can bar that and leave it as that. Um, but yes, um, they it is uh, they are nice figures. Uh, the articulation again isn't that great. It's kind of like the tenth Doctor figure, really, that has those arms. The Doctor Who Torchwood figures are much better than these ones, I can say. But the Cyberwoman is nice, and is in scale with all the others. But they kind of seem more 6-inch, or like 6-inch, 5-inch. They're more taller, because the Jack, on the other hand... If I bring Jack back again, he keeps on annoying me. Tor Doctor Who Jack is... Um, much, much, much smaller than him. That may be because he's standing on a base plate, but I doubt it. These are quite tall figures. Um, me moving swiftly on to Blowfish. So here we have Blowfish. This Blowfish figure appeared... I don't, don't know what episode it was. I think it was the one where John Hart appears. It may be John Hart where he appears. But I'm not too sure, but it is a very good likeness to the episode, I have seen the episode, I'm not just one of those people who, I don't know, reviews the figure and they haven't seen the actual episode, I've seen all the episodes that all of these villains are in, just, uh, well, I don't know, no, I mean, this one, this is Wave 2, I don't ha really have very many figures from Wave 2, only just these two, <laughs> Wave 2, these two, um, yeah, he's kind of got, his head won't move, well, that well, but, He's got ball-jointed arms a bit, but they won't come out to the side. They're more straightforward, but he does have ball joints on the side. It's a bit unusual figure, but he's, um, he is kind of the uh, same articulation as most of the others. And also, yeah, he good likeness, great jacket, great suit and everything. The sculpt is great. Eyes are made great as well. Um, so, well done, Sci-Fi Collector. You've earned yourself very, very proud. Okay, here we have Captain John Hartz, one of Jack's sworn enemies, if we can call them his sworn enemies. Well, one of Jack's enemies. Um, okay, so this figure is probably my favourite figure in the whole of Wave 2, and probably the whole of the Tortured Wave, I would say. Uh, now, this isn't the exclusive one, this is just the one that was... Released in the standard Wave 2 packaging. Um, yeah, I could do a review of this one singly if you wanted me to. I don't really have the boxes for these anymore because they were made out of, like, really hard, weird plastic material. But, uh, like, blister packet that I can't really keep. But if we do a little close-up, you can see the head likeness and everything. It looks spot on. I think it looks exactly like the actor. This is one of the heads that looks so accurate. And gun weapons are nice. They've even got the little vortex mini bays tucked in there. Good to see. May not be able to see on camera that well. No. Um, yeah, so he's got the vortex mini bay tucked in. Yeah, and um, also the shirt sculpt's nice and the jackets. The boots are sculpted nicely and also the two gun holders. And at the back here we have the place to hold his samurai sword. Very good. And um, also, I feel like I should just take you have a look at the base plate. So these are the base plates they come on. Very nice indeed. Uh, just need to put them back on the things. Might take a moment. Okay. So now we're going to be taking a look at the Sarah Jane Adventures figures. The Sarah Jane Adventures figures. So we start off with the first set, the Revenge of the Slovene. Collector set. Uh, well, it wasn't really a collector set, it was more from a made for children. Um, so here it was, and it came with an accessory. Okay, so I'll begin this one um, now. So I'll start with Sarah Jane. So the likeness is. Ah, sorry. The likeness is um, fairly good. Uh, sorry about that. Ah, oh, but then I think I just. Got myself caught then. Um, the Sarah Jane figure is nicely done. You could definitely tell by the face. It's um, the actress who plays uh, Sarah Jane. You can see the lovely hair and everything. 
sculpted great at the back. Uh, it's kind of dress thing she's wearing, very sculpted very nicely. Also the arm sculpted. Obviously they even included the wristwatch. Don't know if you'll be able to see it. Maybe not. Uh, a bit like Jack's rich watch. Uh, his um, his um, a watch. You probably can't see his watch that well. I mean, oh, it's a living falling over. Uh, you probably won't be able to see the watch that well, but it's like the head. Uh, let's move on to our articulation now. The head does the standard uh, side to side. It is a bit hindered though by the and the standard kind of things at the side and everything. Yeah. And 46 here, the legs and everything. These didn't come with base plates, I don't know why character decided not to. And these were made just by character, not sci-fi collector or any of that. These were made officially by character options. And it's good costume, exactly what she wears in Revenge of the Sylvine. Uh, I think it looks great, and yeah. I'll move on to the accessory now that comes in this set, which is really odd. Uh, I thought they would include the Sonic lipstick or something. Probably won't be able to see it that well. If I get it on close on camera. Maybe not. Um, nope, you probably can't see it. It's um, the alien communicator that links up to... Ah, uh, what do you call it? Um, Ujimi Flip. It was... Um, oh yeah, it was used in the Star Poet episode. Um, the first episode of the Seven Adventures. I have no idea why that came with her, but... Must be something. I don't know why. Uh, now the Sladeen, this is the child Sladeen, uh, Kyle, and uh, uh, the Kyle Sladeen, or Nathan Goss Sladeen, whatever you want to say. Um, yeah, it's a bit odd that they didn't release a Luke Smith to go with this because that would have made a a great set. Well, I don't know why they need to release a Sarah Jane. There is no Luke Smith figures, so. Sh I, I could make a custom of that, if anyone would like that. But, um, you have his arms open out wide. You've got the sides, you've got bending bits. There's still quite good articulation. Fairly standard for a Slovene. I do have the Series 1 Slovene. Uh, I've got the Sarah Jane Adventure Slovene. I prefer the neck sculpt on this. And also it's smaller, so it's easier to fit on the shelf. Most of the Sarah Jane Adventures villains are smaller. Uh, I suppose that's because it's a small place they are. <laughs> that makes a bit of a joke. Um, yeah, uh, good likeness to the Slovene in the episode. Good likeness to the suit. Now, we're going to be moving on to a figure that isn't actually a Sarah Jane Adventures figure. And isn't actually a, any figure really at all. It is the Running Press canine figure, figurine. So, well, running press kit figure, you can see likeness in the head, um, very, it's better than the character options one, we can argue that, that's why it goes with Sarah Jane Adventures, because I've got the character one to go with all the other figures. Uh, this one has sounds, so it's like the, uh, master, uh, yeah, it's got the affirmative, and that's quite good, and, um, tail scoped, I did break it before this video, so... It's sorry if it's um it's just blue tacked on, sorry about that. And the sculpt is nice but it's just buttons, no sculpting. Sculpting on the side. It does have two wheels, so again I can whiz across. Yeah, uh his ears are prone to damage. These fall off tons and tons of times. But it's supposed to be based off either the classic series or the Sarah Jane Adventures. Not so sure. Or maybe even K9 and Company, because that would be the only thing we have from that. So, if I knew you could class this as a, a K9 and Company figure, I suppose. Yeah, that's good. Put that back. Now, we'll be moving on to the last set, which is the. Oh, which is the Sarah Jane and Gro Gross or Grass figure, depending on what you say. So, here we have the two figures in the set. Um, yeah, um, I like this set. It's the best likeness to Sarah Jane and the best costume she wears in the series. That she wears most often. Um, last time we started off with Sarah Jane, this time we started off with the villain. They didn't need to keep on re-releasing Sarah Jane. I don't know why they kept on doing that. Okay. 
So the Grosk or Grosk has the side bits and so does the other side there. And um the hand which side side and also the legs are quite small. It's like a goblin y kind of character. Um it's a bit like the back but the uh, figure that was released many many years ago it's kind of like that but yeah it's good the heads are nice and everything i got this from ebay or amazon one of the two yeah it's very nice as well uh, it's very accurate how it appears in whatever happened to sarah jane and also in uh that oh, i can't remember the other one but there's something about sarah jane's parents or something we we'll have a look at the weapon that came with the Grosk, called Grosk. There we go, it's got the sculpt and everything. It's seen to zap people back in time. And Sarah Jane, the, uh, this is, uh, we've got more better articulation than all the others. It's got the side bit. There, uh, now the sides and everything, arms go up and down. It's much nicer leg bends and everything. It's, um, it's fairly good. And silver hips and everything. Head likeness is great as well. Yeah, I think it's a great figure. Sculpt is nice. And yeah, I think it is a fantastic figure and really good likeness. And the accessory is just the same again. Uh, I don't know why they kept on. I think that accessory was with all of the Sarah Jane Adventures figures. Now, that about wraps it up for today. That about wraps it up for today. Um, and I hope you all enjoyed the review slash collections of all of my figures. Hope you enjoyed the figure video and... Give it a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe, and do all the other stuff you want to do. And now that is a goodbye from me. Please subscribe, and I salute you all, and see you in another, another video soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.